books, books. I like books. I'm going to read them all. Hi readers, Chris here. Welcome to my channel where I review fantasy, Stephen King, all sorts of books. And today I'm going to be talking about Masters of Death by Olive Blake. Now, this is the first one of her books that I've read. And I've heard that her the writing that's in this book is similar to her other books. And that makes me a little bit hesitant to read some of her other books. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, the entire setup of this book is like really difficult to explain. So on the inside flap, you know, where it gives you the summary and it tells you what the book is about, it explains that there's this young girl named uh, Viola and she is like basically a real estate agent. She's trying to sell a house. It's infected with ghosts. And she calls on this medium, this young boy named Fox, to come and help her. That is not what this book is about at all. Like, it, it made it sound like Viola is the main character, when really it's Fox who's the main character. And Fox is not only a medium, Fox is the grandson of Death. Yes, that's right. Death is an actual character in this book. And if I'm being honest, he's my favorite character in the book. I'm not going to go into how Fox found himself the godson of death, but the book is basically about Fox's relationship with his godfather, Death, and there is this weird immortal game that's played where all of these otherworldly creatures sit down at a table, play a game, and then there's a winner, kind of. And that is what this book is about. If it sounds like nonsense, it doesn't make any sense, well, that is kind of how I feel about this book. <laughs> so let's start with the world building, and that's probably the thing I like most about this book, is that I do think there is a really cool world that's created here. I'm someone that's into supernatural stuff, and there is all sorts of supernatural stuff in this book. There's vampires, there's witches, there's ghosts, there's angels, there's there's death. I mean, all of that stuff I find really, really, really fun. Now, where it starts to fall apart for me are the characters and the plot. So let's start with the characters. Um, this book has way too many characters, way too many. There are so many characters that I don't feel like each one, there's not enough time to like adequately develop every single character because there's just too many. And instead of having like a, a main character that the book tries to follow, the book tries to follow everyone. Yes, it does follow Fox more than any of the other characters, but it still gives way too much attention to these other characters and doesn't allow the the main ones, like Fox and Viola, should have been a main one. She's not. They don't allow those characters to flourish. And I will say Fox has a very interesting romance in this book. And I wish that, like, I wish that that's what the book had been centered around. He has a really nuanced, dynamic uh, relationship with this other, you know, godling type creature. And I think that's one of the highlights of this book is their relationship, which I think is really sweet and very romantic and one of those classic, like, we shouldn't be together type tales, but we can't stay away from each other because we love each other. So Fox and his boyfriend, like, I love their relationship together. Unfortunately, like I said, none of the other characters get enough screen time to really get connected to them at all. And finally, that brings me to the plot, which is what I struggled the most with. This book is written in a very unique style, like very unique. I read a couple reviews for this book online, and <clears throat> I wish I could credit the person, but there is a review somewhere on Goodreads that describes this book as being written by squirrels on crack. <laughs> and what that means to me is that it's very jerky. It jumps around so much that it's like, 
almost impossible to follow at times. It jumps between different character perspectives. Sometimes within the same page, it jumps between different characters. It jumps between different timelines, like past, present, like it's just, it jumps around so, so much that you never get a chance to like actually get settled in with a time period or with a character. You never get that chance because it's constantly jumping and cutting to the next thing. And yeah, there are definitely some people out there that like that. It's a very different style. Like it's, and I appreciate someone that tries something different. I 100% do. It's just, unfortunately, <laughs> this one did not work for me. And then when it comes to this immortal game, which the book is actually about, when it comes to the game, it's, it's one of those ones where you have to come up with like what it means on your own. So if you are someone like me who likes to be told every little detail and likes things wrapped up in a nice little bow, you are not going to like this book because the book never explains what the game really is. It's, it's up to you, the reader, to decide. It doesn't tell you what the rules are. It doesn't tell you how it's played. And I don't want to ruin it, but basically it's like two people sit at a table and stare at each other until like one person, I don't know, admits some deep, dark secret. I don't know. It's very bizarre. And I can understand like what the what the vision was here. And again, I respect it for being something different. But again, I am one of those people, I don't like to have to think about my entertainment. Like, yes, I want it handed to me. And does that make me a simpleton? Probably. But I don't care. That's what I like. And you know what you like. If you like books that are very deep and philosophical and don't give you all the answers, you might really enjoy Masters of Death. If you're more like me, <laughs> you are not going to enjoy this one. So I would recommend that you skip it. So just to wrap this one up, I did like the world building of this book. I appreciate that it was written in a different style, and I do like a lot of the things that the book was going for. Unfortunately, I had a really hard time connecting with the characters. I had a really hard time following the writing style. I didn't understand the plot at all. So ultimately, this one left me feeling a bit disappointed and hesitant to read another book by this author. So that is all for me today. So now I want to know from you, have you read Masters of Death? Have you read anything else by Olive Blake? Roscoe and I are going to go try to get some wrapping done. And by wrapping, I mean, I'm going to try to wrap. He's probably going to tear into everything, <laughs> but that's okay. As always, before you go, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel. He's ripping stuff already <laughs> for more bookish stuff and more furry friends coming your way soon. All right, everyone, happy reading.